Okay, so this is module five, which is selecting the ideal new agent recruit and training. To bring you up to speed on everything that we've covered to this point, uh, I have talked in depth about building essentially a brand of your agency, as well as the process to find agent recruits, whether you're going to recruit experienced agents or you're going to recruit brand new agents, and then also teaching you how to do the opportunity meeting as well. So at this point, we're kind of fine-tuning some final issues. And when it comes to finding the right match for your agency, and then also training the new agents who are brand new or just experienced agents who are brand new to whatever kind of product that you're selling, maybe they don't have any experience. So again, I've been recruiting since 2013. I have a lot of experience dealing with agents, so I'm going to spend a lot of time giving you my perspective, especially on the training or selecting the ideal agent part. I think that's critical to master as quickly as possible. So again, today's objective is very simple. How to identify the best odds agent recruit, <clears throat> how to simultaneously train your agents and create evergreen training so that you can start to rely, not entirely outsource the training process where you do nothing face-to-face -face or individually with the agent, but to get to the point where you can rely on training um, that will help them when they need it and they can access it, such as my video training. And then action items today we're also going to do uh, predefine the character traits that are good, that are with good agents to have. Does that make sense? Predefine the character traits good agents recruits have. There we go. And then uh, understand how to effectively train new agents. That's today's goal. So let's get right to recruiting to start first. So look, here's the deal, guys. You must get good at selecting the best opportunity agents that you can find. Better said, what you want to do is get as good as possible. It's not possible to be perfect. But get to the point where, and this takes time, it takes effort, it takes reps, it takes activity, it takes experiencing this. You don't just learn this academically and do it. But you can kind of get some guidelines from this training. You want to make sure that you learn how to select the right agent. And better, as, as much as possible, every time you select an agent to work with you, that that person has the best odds of success. Here's the deal. You are effectively co-signing on tens of thousands of dollars in, income, er, in, in loans with every single person that you sign up. You have to take this risk seriously. Anybody who's recruited for a very long time knows how it is to have significant chargeback roll-ups. What I mean by that is that you're in the business of essentially uh, 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 saying that a person's word is good enough that you'll back it. And that's really, really important that you cannot overestimate in its importance. And so what happens is, is that you got to make sure that every person that you pick is going to be as, as upside potential as possible as far as a profitable selection. But I think more importantly, you want to make sure that you minimize the risk for losses as much as possible. Because the loss risk in hiring an agent that's a mishire can be tremendously impactful in a negative way for you, to say the least. Now, good character traits and top agents. Let's kind of talk about this a little bit because I think it's important to identify what is good and what isn't so good. Hold on. So the first thing you want is you want to make sure that they're coachable. Okay. So what I mean by coachable is you want somebody who doesn't take offense to you having to go out there and uh, 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 advising them on doing things differently or better. Uh, you want somebody who's not going to take it personal that you're going to coach them to try to improve better. There's a whole lot of people out there who think they know better than you. Trust me, I know. I deal with agents all the time. They think they've got the accurate vision of how things are supposed to be. They've got it all figured out, even though they haven't had success. Those are the people you don't want to necessarily recruit because they'll cause you a lot of adversity and frustration and not really amount to anything. <clears throat> And there are ways that you can discern this, as we'll talk about later. Um, good agents are humble and recognize that your life experience means a significant amount. And at the end of the day, it means that um, you know, they're willing to take your information and take your teaching and, and apply it to themselves uh, rigorously. 
So coachability is a forthright importance when it comes to recruiting agents. Second of all, you got to make sure that they are disciplined. This is really, really important. Again, you want somebody who can take your teaching, who is coachable, but will every single day apply the system that you teach. You don't want to recruit people that are undisciplined. Again, there are things that you will look for later on we'll talk about that will identify the level of discipline that a person has. Number three here, I like trying, ideally, not always, but ideally, I like recruiting agents that have experienced success in some form of their life, in some fashion in their life. So for example, um, this is, I think, a really good indicator of success if nobody has had business success that you're recruiting. I should say, if the person you're recruiting doesn't have any business success and they're young, let's say they're fresh out of college or they're on the younger side of things, you want to find somebody who's had personal success, say, in sports. A lot of sales organizations love hiring people who show signs of success in sports because many of the character traits to be successful in sports have a direct impact on their ability to be successful in business or in sales. Um, if somebody's older that you're recruiting, I would want to see that they've had success in life in other avenues. It doesn't have to be necessarily sales success. In some sense, it's a good thing if it is, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. But the key thing is to make sure that they know what it's like to be above and beyond others in the sense of you know uh, getting a success. Most people don't experience success. Again, you know, you want to judge a person by their history to a certain extent and, and kind of investigate for, um, investigate for clues that somebody has the stuff to be successful. Action-oriented. This is really, really, really important. You want to see people who, if they don't have success in life, they have taken action to improve themselves. Uh, action orientation, meaning they've tried things out and maybe it hasn't worked. Uh, maybe they tried to do something well and it didn't work out. Uh, maybe they've taken steps to read a lot of books uh, to try to improve themselves. They just don't sit around and wait for things to happen. There's evidence in their career or in their life as young adults that they've taken steps to try to better themselves. Action orientation is critical when you hire or recruit an agent. And of course, discipline, work ethic, kind of the same thing. You want evidence that somebody's not lazy, in other words. And personable, of course, you gotta have people who, generally speaking, care about their clients and care about people and uh, wanna do well by them. You don't have to necessarily hire somebody who's a, an extroverted people person. I certainly wasn't when I first started, but looking back at myself, um, I was probably sort of, I was coachable, not to the most extent. I was absolutely disciplined and had a work ethic and was action oriented. And I had a little success in my life. I didn't have a background in, in sports. Um, I guess I did a little martial arts, but yeah, I guess so. I guess so. And, and, but I experienced a little success with my first business. So if I were recruiting me, you know, I would probably have some signs that this is probably something that's going to work out. And the positive for me, kind of looking from the outside in or backwards, hindsight 2020. But um, that de de definitely didn't have everything. And the reality is, is when you go out there and find people and you start asking and, and start dealing with, with prospects that are agent prospects, you'll find that not everybody's going to fit, you know, check marks down the back end. You're going to have people who are better in one thing than another. And, and part of becoming a good, good recruiter and then trainer is identifying that at least some of the core issues or core character traits are there and um, you can work and refine on the other ones later because like, everybody's a little bit unique and different. Now here's the thing, you notice I haven't said, you know, uh, these are all character traits. These are all things that I think at the end of the day you, people will have. Now you can cultivate and grow these aspects of a person's, pers a person's personality to a certain extent but these are inherent within the people already. Your job is to kind of find the diamond in the rough, you know, that are, you know, somebody who has signs of excellence, who could do very well. 
and just hasn't had an opportunity presented to them that matches who they are from a personality standpoint. Now, I think it's important to also indicate the things that don't matter. Uh, three things in particular. First of all, pedigree, age, or gender. I don't think any of these things matter. When I say pedigree, like, do you have a college degree? Do you have an associate's degree? Do you have a high school diploma? None of that stuff matters in this business. I haven't had one client that I remember that could care two cents about any of that stuff. What they care is about what you can do for me. And the great thing about this business is that it doesn't matter where our agents come from in life as long as they have the character traits. So like, for example, resumes. I've had people send me resumes. Resumes don't mean crap to me. Resumes, when I look at them as a salesperson, I think, oh, this is the best demonstration of this person possible, which, okay, that maybe means something. It takes the time to put it together and it's thoughtful, but it's a sales letter. You know, it's designed to extol the best parts, not the worst parts, which again, you know, okay, a resume is good, but let's see you actually out here, as we'll talk about later, how I like to interview agents to determine if they're good. Certainly gender doesn't matter and age doesn't either. I've got a guy right now who's 21 years old, writing $10,000, $15,000 a week. I've had agents who are 50s, 60s, 70s, even 80s who sell this stuff successfully. So it doesn't matter. And it's nice that you don't have to think and, and worry about if this stuff does or not. Thanks for watching my video on building your own insurance agency. And before you go, I want to stress, if you are interested in building an agency, you have got to find the right setup to give you the opportunity to build the agency in your brand, to make it your own, and to maximize the opportunity out of your hard work. What I've discovered as an agency owner since 2013 is that many of the agents out there who aspire to build an agency, doesn't matter what product it is, partner with the wrong companies. They partner with companies that steal their downlines, that terminate them to eliminate them from their downlines, and ultimately build the brand of the company or the agency and not their own brand. What I teach agents is how to brand their own agency in their name to give them the opportunity to maximize their commissions, whatever kind of products they're selling, and to ultimately create a real business that actually gets results. I'm sick and tired of all these corporations out here who are involved in the insurance business screw so many good-hearted agents over with quote-unquote agency opportunities. So this whole rant is just for me to explain to you that now I have a program. If you are interested in doing some sort of agency building, but you want to make sure you join the right agency, you want to make sure you get the training from A to Z, from recruiting, from training, from coaching agents, to building and scaling and having lead generation, you think that's important to know and you know you need it, my program is for you. So if you want to learn more about how I help agents become successful and independent agency owners, here's what you need to do. Go to daviddufor.com, click Join Dave's Agency, and you'll see a little link in the bottom that says something about uh, check out my agency program. And there you'll find all sorts of information that will describe how it works and give you an idea of uh, the details and to determine if it's right for you. So check that out if this is something you're serious about doing. And you guys have a good day and thanks for watching. See ya.